So we're now just going to work out this integral. Now notice my substitution I'm going to use for this one. I'm going to make it the same substitution. So all these steps are actually already done for me. So all I have to do is say it's the integral of... And actually all these steps are going to be the same as well. So square root of 25 times 1 minus sine squared u. When you do the square root of 25 you get 5. This is cosine squared so we get cosine u. So actually what I can say then is this equals 5 over sine u. Now the only difference is this time dx is also this. So I'm going to multiply these two things together. In the last example that I did, these two things actually cancelled out and I just got left with 1. So I've got a little bit more work to do. Now one other thing to notice at this point as well. I haven't put the limits back on the integral. And the reason I haven't done that is these limits are in terms of x, whereas I've just made a u substitution, so my limits should now be in terms of u. Now I have actually gone ahead and solved for u, so I could actually start working out what these values are. So if I was to plug in 5 down here, 5 over 5 is 1, inverse sine of 1, and I could get a u limit. I'm going to leave it until the end of the question. Once it's back in terms of x, then I'll substitute my x limits. So simplifying here. We've got the square root of 25 cosine squared u du. And we need to be very careful at this point. It's very easy for us to make a very silly mistake at this point and try doing something like increase the power by 1, divide by the new exponent. That's not going to work for this function. Now this one goes back all the way to when we did our integration with trig, which I believe was either chapter 6 or chapter 7. So we need to use an identity to do this one. And that formula is on your formula sheet, although the difference is it says x rather than saying u. It's my question to you, I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to try and rearrange this then for cosine squared u. So if I add 1 to both sides and then divide by 2, then I can now make a substitution in for cosine squared. So I've also got to divide by 2 here as well. I'm going to take the half out to the front here. So I'm going to do a half times the integral of 25 times cosine 2x plus 1. So I've done my substitution. Now I just need to worry about my uh, integral. And actually 1 times 25 should also be 25. So if I do my integral... The integral for cosine 2x is sine 2x over 2, which is also on your formula sheet. And the integral for 25 is just going to be 25u. I should be very careful with doing this. This is still in terms of u right now, so let me quickly go back and fix this. There we go, that's better. And now we can substitute back for u, and we have it from the previous question because we use the same substitution. Uh, u equals sine to the negative 1 of x over 5. And as it's starting to get a little long, I'm going to come across here to this side. Questions back in terms of x, I'm quite happy to go ahead and put my limits back in there. So the original question said 5 and negative 5, so I can go back and substitute those in. Now this looks pretty horrible, but actually there's going to be a lot of simplifying that we can actually do on this. So when we plug 5 into here, we get 5 over 5, which is 1. Inverse sine of 1, make sure you calculate it in radian mode when you're doing this question as well. Uh, it's 90 degrees, but as we're in radians, it's pi over 2. Now notice 2 times pi over 2 is also going to simplify, it's just going to be pi. So what we actually have here is, and before I do too much and lose track of where I'm at, that's the first part. Uh, same thing with 5 here, 5 over 5 is 1, so inverse sine of 1 is going to be pi over 2, and 25 times pi over 2. I can just put that. 
subtract, when we plug in negative 5, the major difference is we're going to get negative 5 over 5 here, which is negative 1. When does sine equal negative 1? Well, that's going to be negative pi over 2. And then 2 times negative pi over 2 is going to become negative pi. And the same thing for this one. When we substitute in negative 5 into this, negative 5 over 5 is going to be negative 1. Inverse sine of negative 1 is pi over 2. And 25 times pi over negative pi over 2 is going to be negative 25 pi over 2. And we've still got to remember this half at the start of the question as well. So we've got a lot of little bit of organisation skills to be on this question, just to make sure we don't make any silly mistakes. Uh, some simplifying we can do now. Well, sine of negative pi. Um, I could use the fact that a sine as pi is an uh, sorry, a sine is an odd function. Then the sine of negative pi is the same as negative sine of pi. So I could change that straight away. And the reason I want to do that is I would then have some like terms that I could collect together. So 25 sine pi over 2 plus 25 sine pi over 2 would be 50 sine pi over 2, or I could just say 25 sine pi. And 25 pi over 2 minus negative 25 pi over 2 would be 50 pi over 2, which is just 25 pi. Also, I know that the sine of pi is going to be uh, zero, so this term actually cancels. And so actually I have a half of 25 pi, which is 25 pi over two. So a very long question for this second part, and that was actually why I paused the video. The first one was so short in comparison, but for the second one, this video is going to be much longer, and a lot of these steps we just took from the first part as well. Um, I think this is a key example for you because it does include some key steps and it reminds you on how to integrate the integral of cosine squared, which I think is quite an important one. Also, being able to rearrange for x when you have sine to the negative 1, um, I think also makes this question slightly more difficult. And one other key thing you should remember from this question is, while well, my question was in terms of u, I didn't have any limits, but as soon as I substitute back in for x, then I change my limits back in terms of x as well.